Hello, welcome to Mandy's Creative Touch. I have a fun little fruit harvest that we're going to do here today. And I just want to show you one of the bags I made. Now, these bags can be bought through the, I think it's called the bag store. It's, uh, if you're from Canada, it's in Mississauga, Ontario, the one that I know of. And uh, fortunately, I can pop in there if I'm in the city and see all the different varieties there. But I'm sure if you go on their website, or if you're down in the States, I'm sure there's very similar uh, stores that just sell plain bags that you can paint on. And this is the way to go now. Everybody's trying to get away from the plastic bags, so they're reusing the bags. And it's nice to have a few bags for different seasons. So this is my fall one that I've made. And um, I did make a couple for Christmas that were very popular. And they also make great gifts bags. So if you want to make your gifts and uh, pop this in here to give, they get like a two-in-one gift. So a lot of people like to uh, to do stuff like that too. So um, today I just want to break this down quickly and we're going to paint on some paper and practice this. And then you can downsize it or make it bigger depending on what you're painting on. Um, this makes a lovely card as well. So if you're like giving cards away that you hand paint, you know, so there's lots of different ideas that you can... Uh, make something for the fall time you know happy thanksgiving wish you were closer so we can visit you know something like that would be nice you know for family far away so we're going to um start with just a quick uh way to delay this out so there's no real template for this um what i suggest that you do is just maybe grab a little bit of chalk and um what we're going to do is just start with a you know, basic shape, but it's almost like a hat. So we're going to start about, you know, we don't want to make it too big, but we don't want to make it too small either. And we can always make things bigger. So I always suggest to try and make it smaller because on paper, it's kind of hard to erase the, uh, the chalk a little bit without wetting the paper. So it, you know, just try to make it a little bit smaller. And then when you're painting, if you feel like you want a bit bigger, then definitely you can always go a little bit bigger. So this is like the cavity of the inside. And just tuck this in just a little bit more so you'll see what I mean by um, trying to erase this now you know you could take a wet brush and try to you know erase a little bit very lightly but don't wet it too hard uh, too much because then your paper will start to cripple okay so we're just doing a quick layout of the shape and we can always kind of come in a little bit to make that a little bit more pointy there okay so we're not going to really see a lot of the definition of this it's going to be you know your pears are going to be here and your apple and you know some grapes and then you know we're going to put a nice big leaf in here and our plums you can put in there and some little bit of one stroke leaves and you know try to make a little bit of variations of what I originally done so again if this is kind of showing after you want to pop this in you know kind of wipe this out a little bit so that you're happy with the shape okay so so far what I've put on my plate is just the burnt auburn and actually camel Okay, so my original I did with uh, yellow ochre, I believe, or uh, daffodil yellow, toned it down. Um, and I really want my pear to stand out a little bit more, different color. So what I decided to try to do this time was make a, uh, a little bit more of a softer blend. And you can always brighten this up if you still feel like you want it to be, you know, a lot, a lot bigger. So what I did was start with my circle. Okay. And you only need a very, very little bit of burnt auburn. So 
definitely make it like a three-quarter blend. Okay, so basically we just want to get a you know, thin coat to start the shape. Okay, this is paper, so if you put it on too thick, uh, I find again it wets the paper too much and makes it really funny. So what I like to do is just put a base coat there and let that dry a little bit. Okay, so now I want to add the um, stripey parts. Okay, so you can start right at the top. Make sure you don't have a big lot there. And then what we're going to do is make little U's. Okay, so you're going to start off there. And make sure you're happy with that first stroke. Because once you go down, then it's a little bit harder to fix that stroke if you're not using the same thickness of your brush. You see, I'm going into the thickness of the brush. So to go back over it and fix it, you're definitely going to have a harder time. So this is way too low. Okay, so again, what I suggest is if you want just to go ahead and base coat this so that you have a little bit of color on the paper and just starting to get your general shape okay and then also filling it in okay. And any canvases really is just to try to get a uh, base coat down. Okay, and if it's not flowing for you, if you have fresh paint here you just pulled out of the bottle, it should be okay. okay so now I'm going to just go back in and add another layer. And you can see that it's going to cover a lot better the second time. Okay, so I'm going to push it really hard to get it worked in. Okay. We can always go in and add more. Okay. Fix our line, add a little bit of paint. And then that'll define our line. So you don't want a lot of dark. Okay, so hopefully you can see what I'm doing here. Play with it until you're happy. And if you're still not getting a good coverage, sometimes we have, to, I'd rather do it, you know, three thin coats than two real thick gloppy coats because you can still fix things and add things. And if you make it too gloppy and thick, when you start to put your pears and apples on here, you're going to be painting over those bumps and you're going to see that through your painting. So it's really important to try to make this thin, okay? If you feel like the, uh, oops, three-quarter brush is um, too big for you. You can always downsize to a 16 or a 12, whatever size brush you want. And if you notice, I always squish my brush after I wet it just to really enforce the chisel being nice and thin. Okay, so just a very little bit of burnt auburn. I'm going to downsize to a smaller brush. And then we can get some smaller strokes in there. Okay, so make sure it's not too gloppy and wet because behind it, you really want it to be a little bit dry, not so glo gloppy. Because when you go to put your next stroke in there, if you're 
camel is too wet, then it's going to be harder to get a good coverage. Okay. So we can always go back in with a smaller detail brush and enforce these lines to be a little darker later. Mm -hmm. A little bit over that chalk there so I can see a little better. Okay, so we just kind of want to get them started. Okay. So I'm tipping into the burnt auburn just before I make the strokes so then that way I can you don't want to make them too, too curvy, just a little bit curvy. Okay. I'm not really adding any more camel to my brush. When I go and fix my blend, I'm just mostly picking up the burnt auburn. Okay. So then I just keep layering it over. And a little bit more straighter now. Mm -hmm. Straighter, so you're seeing the curve of Okay, so when you come over to the side, you can straighten out your brush and come down a little bit. Okay, so over and then kind of follow the shape. Okay, I'm get enough coverage and my slide is not going enough, so then I will add a little bit more paint. Okay, try to soften this out so then it's not too thick. further over and they can just slightly overlap okay so you see this last one here it's actually not it's too much burnt auburn so i'm just going to go back up a little bit and try to bring that up a little bit more okay, so that's the nice thing about the paint you can just kind of Make sure you're happy with it. Okay, so sometimes I'll slide a little bit more light color in there just to you know, bring it up a little bit higher. And then when I make my stroke, it kind of brings that lightness up a little bit. Okay, and let's go back over here. So you can see now that I've done this, this is getting a little bit gloopy there. So, okay. it along a little bit push it right in there and then I'm going to try and put one more in there so I want to kind of smooth that out a little bit turn your own right side and I just want to add one more in there and then you can go back in now and fix this last opening here. And so here's your third coat that you can Just a little bit of burnt umber. 
if you want to flip this around and add more of a hollow look in the center you could always do that too and what I do is I try to stay away from the edge and I go right in the middle so that I'm still getting the camel and you're flipping in your circles okay so if it's not giving you enough coverage then I would suggest to just wait just wait for it to dry Oops. You see how I just stopped and worked that paint in a little bit? Sometimes you have to do that to get the stroke to go smoothly. I'm not going to worry too much, like I said, in here. A little bit more burnt over in there. So then when you start to smooth it out, little tricks I do just to get it in there. Okay. Well, like I said, it's just a, you probably won't even see this, but just it'll give a little bit of a depth to behind the apple and your leaves. Just fun to play around a little bit, right? So if there's any areas that you don't like around the side, you can always just overlap a leaf on top of there. You know, I'm just going to leave that because I know that I'm going to probably put a leaf up there. Okay, so you try to make these edges a little bit smooth as much as you can around the outside. And I suggest to wait for this to dry really well before you start erasing any chalk that you might see. Okay, just leave it there. Okay, so we're going to add some uh, thicket. And I think I'm going to use Happy Green today. You can use Citrus Green, Lime Green. If you want to make it a little bit more brighter, you can use your, um, Citrus Green. There's another softer one too that you could use, or just a little bit of yellow and white. Okay, so if you want to have that third dimension, then always having the white in there helps. So the first thing I'm going to do here is make my big leaf. So I'm mark that bright green in, and I'm just going to add a little bit of white to lighten it up a little bit. And I'm going to try and use more dark than light. Okay. So right off the side, you're going to start your stroke. That's my little test. Did I get enough paint on there? I don't think so. I have to load this up a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And then there we go. Now I'm happy with that first. Okay. So there we go. Okay. Make this a little bit fancy. I love real time mistakes. There we go. Oh well, this is looking kind of cool. This is 3D. How do you do this look? Just plop a bit of dark green. Alright, I'm not sure you can see that on the camera, but maybe when you see the pictures. Okay, so I'm going to start all the way over here so you can see that there's actually a V. Okay. And then I'm going to follow this all the way around and slide it right in there. So I see already that I've got a big lot happening right there. So I'm just going to pull some of that out. And now that I like the shape of it, I'm going to go over it again. I know. And some wiggles and then some bump looking. And you get tighter wiggles and then the smoothness. You know, it 
those variations give you a different look. You don't want to be consistent with your wiggle. So again, concentrating on getting that first one all the way around. I like that one. All the way around. And then a little bigger, a little smaller. Okay. If you run out of paint, this is a big leaf. So, you know, sometimes I will go and pick up a little bit more off my plate. Okay. Missing anything? Again, you know, just fill it in a little bit and smooth out those big floppy spots. So now I'd like to um, add a few more leaves in the background. So sometimes I'll add so that, that way the pear can lay on them a little bit more or underneath the grapes in the back. So you can leave this area here for your plums, but try to give yourself a little bit more space here so you have room for them. And you can try and make them small with your big brush. And then I'm going to put another one in here. And then I'm going to put a couple over on this side. You can put these there. So what I do is I slide my flat brush up and then press so that you get a little bit of stem all in one. Okay. And the same thing over here, you can just drag it a little bit, and then put your pressure. Okay, so give you a little bit of a stem. And then we can always add a few down here, just drag it a little bit, and then pressure. Okay, almost went off the page there. Okay, and then if you don't like it, you can just go over it again. Okay. Not getting enough light green. As I just pick up a little bit of that light green. Okay. And I'm going to put one right there. Okay, so that's good to start. And again, if you're not happy with any of your leaves or anything and you feel like you have to go over it again definitely now is the time sometimes when it you know it's a good chance to go over and perfect but I try to be very careful just to go over that same line again so there's a little bit more coverage And I'm staying inside of that line. Okay. And then now if you want to put a little stem in, I'm just going to drag your... Okay, put a little pressure, slide a little bit, lift up on your heel, and just drag your toe through. Okay, I'll show you again. Every time you do one of these stems, you have to go and fix your blend. Okay. So I want the light to come through, so I'm using the light at the top. Okay, putting pressure. And then just lifting up on my brush. Okay. So of course it's a little bit fatter now, a little bit longer. You can get the idea there. And again, if you want to put some stems into your little leaves, okay, maybe do two. Okay, and you'll see just light or little wisps. Okay, so it's harder to get them in there when On there again. And so what I would do there, if you're not happy with that, just go over it again. There you go. Get rid of that 
and we'll go over to him. Okay, so now I want to add some color into my design, and I'm going to move down to a 12. And we're going to pick up some daffodil yellow. I like doing the lighter colors first because then it's harder to get the darker colors out of your brush after if you want to easier. Okay, so what I'm going to do is do a little blend. I want to pick up a little bit of that cameo and a little bit of that daffodil yellow and just start working that in a little bit. Okay, so you'll see that it just gives it a little bit more of a softer yellow but still has some brightness to it. On the other side, I want to use a bit of yellow ochre. And you really don't need a lot, so even that little splash is probably all we need. Okay, so I'm just going to give a little bit of a shadow onto that one side. Okay, and then to give it a little bit more depth, just the smallest amount of burnt umber. Okay, so we don't want too much burnt umber, but we want just a little tiny bit for shading, just to deepen that. And also the burnt armor will change the shade of shade of that yellow ochre as well. And it'll look a little more softer. Okay. So I've got a good blend going on there. So now I want to do the pear. So basically it's like a upside down heart. And if you feel more comfortable, you know, you could always uh, flip your thing around. Okay. And what I like to do first is just See, I hardly have enough paint on there, but I'm just trying to get shape. Am I liking that? No. Okay, so I'm going to bring this one out a little bit more. And it's like you're building a bum. Okay. So make sure you load up your brush, because we mostly want the light color, okay? So we can definitely start applying our base coat to this now. Just to get that coverage. Okay. And just a little bit dark. Okay. And then we're going to go right up so that it joins at the top. Okay. So I'm just using the one side of my flat brush to fill in. I'm not trying to, to get the dark there. You just want to give it some coverage and still kind of giving it a little bit of a dark edge to it. Okay. You definitely want to have it lighter on the top part and then as it goes under then I would add just a smidge of burnt umber in there just so that it looks like there's shadow underneath the pair. Put more of a yellow ochre look on the top part. Okay, so I would definitely let that dry a little bit if you feel like you want to uh, add more to that. Okay. So now we can start putting um, some red for our apple. Right. And again, because of, you know, you just want to make a little bit of a circle. Right. You don't really need patterns. And you can have this apple sitting a little bit on the leaf, overlapping. Okay. Every one you do is going to look different. So basically, again, I'm just trying to base coat things. Okay, and get the general shape. 
And down here at the bottom of the apple, you have a little bit of a bump, a lump, a lump. Right. It depends on what kind of apple you have there. You can always make a Granny Smith if you want. Okay. And I don't want to make this pink, but I do want to give it some uh, a little bit of more stronger coverage. So I just added a little tiny bit of the uh, white into it. Okay. So I'm also going to kind of make this a little smoother around the top. So it's almost flat on the top, okay. and then a little bit more, a little bit of lumps there, okay. and just go all the way around the edge with your really strong red. And again, just trying to fill in and get that coverage. So, so you know, you will tend to go over this a couple times but if you add the white into it now and then when you go over it again and when you keep your brush flat you'll get more coverage if you have your up and down you'll actually squeegee it right off so just kind of like flat brush a little bit so then that way you're getting the coverage okay. so we're going to move on to adding uh, our plums and for them, I'm going to use a dioxin um, Parisian blue. Okay, nice dark blue. You could add a little bit of cobalt into that if you feel like it's way too dark. And I just wasted a lot of this beautiful color. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I actually flip this back into my... So I just put that right over, give it a little bit of a spin. And I scooped up some of that paint back into the bottle because it's just really a waste if you're not going to use it all. Okay. Then I'll take my brush and just make sure that my edge is clean before I put the cap on so that it doesn't get all dry in there. And okay. I might have used a different blue because I didn't have the Parisian blue. And sometimes plums have a tiny little bit of reddish hue to it. So I'm going to add just a tiny little bit of red. And you can see that if you don't have the purple, that you can almost make one with a red. But I don't want a lot of red. I just want a tiny little bit of red because um, I still want to keep these really blue looking. And so we have two plums here sitting on top of each other. So what I always do is like to do the back one first. Okay. So again, you're going to do a little bit of a circle and bring that circle around. Okay. Then you're going to go the other way and build your circle that way. Okay. That's how I do my pair. So I'm trying to make this one a little bit a quicker one for you guys. As you get playing, you'll see that, um, you know, you'll practice a little bit and you'll be able to do this. but I hope that you're getting the gist of it. Okay. So once I have that general shape of the plum, I flip my brush in so that it's on an angle. Okay, don't go up and down. Do a little bit on an angle. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna bring that second little hump of the, and then you're gonna slide it across and then straight over. So you're starting here and you're working your way over to get that shape so that you're not getting any strong points when you start and finish. Okay. Then again, you can always go upside down and fix your little mini circle inside your big circle. So that kind of looks a little bit like that. Eh? Then if you want to add a little bit more 
a uh, different hue to it. You know, you can make the second one just a slight, slight more red into it. So again, we're just going to go on a little bit more of an angle this time so that our other plum comes down a little bit lower. And we're going to do the same thing. Just a little bit of highlight in the middle, so when you want to have that tiny bit of gradient at the end, you don't get it. I mean, when you have, so you just keep playing with it until you get the color that you're looking for. And you move down into your gradient. So then there we go, we're bringing it a little bit darker now. Okay. Make sure this smooth this line here is nice and smooth the way you want it because again you're gonna go over that bottom area again when we do the second little hump of your plum. Okay. Again sometimes I'll start in the middle. Okay, try to give you some different options. You can start over, just flip your brush over and twist it around so that you have a pivot point kind of in the middle. You're pivoting the, the lighter color and you're just moving the dark around. Okay. Getting it over enough so it just meets the edge. So it's almost like an egg shape. So we add a few more leaves onto that, it'll disguise any beginning areas that you might not like. Let it dry and go over it again if you're not happy. Or you can try and add more paint. Or flip a little leaf in there. Okay, so there's our second pair. Now we want to add our, uh, we can use like a perfect purple if you want a little bit lighter. Or you can add just a tiny bit of that Parisian blue. Or if you have Ink Spot, Ink Spot is another uh, darker shade that you could easily darken your perfect purple with too. So it just depends on whatever darkest blue you have. I like mixing colors together. I want to uh, get different shades. So then that way if I'm doing different grapes, the ones in the back are going to be a little bit darker than the ones in the front. Okay. So we're going to start it off with our back ones so I want them to be a little bit darker. So we have two bunches of little grapes here so we can put one start with these ones over here and you're just making little circles right like I showed you in the first class with the 10 basic strokes and if you feel like this is too um, big for you to spin around. Okay, we can definitely move this down to a size 10 now. Okay, there's a 10. A little bit more Parisian blue. And more white. Okay. So these ones here are definitely closer to you, so they can be a little bit bigger. Okay. And like that. You don't want a lot of white, but you want the coverage right now, right? So what I suggest is just leave your white a little bit dirty. Okay, don't make it bright, bright white. But it's going to give you some nice, strong coverage to to do it. So you can overlap your grapes a little bit, but definitely. You want to uh, do a few 
just to get the coverage there. Leave a little bit of a space so you can layer another one on top of it later. So they're a little bit like eggs too in a bit. You know, some of them are going to sit more sideways. Some of them are going to sit straight on. So you can have a variety of different shapes. So I'll just go over those. Then we're going to put a couple over here on this side. So what I try to do is get you guys to start um, playing. Just just do it. Just you know, don't always depend on a pattern. You know, play and uh, practice on paper. You know, before you do your canvas or buy those bags or spend a lot of time on good good card stock. You know, you could always you know, buy cheaper paper to uh, practice on or wax paper. Okay. So there's good. So I like to do like e uneven numbers usually. Okay. So we can make another one there. So as long as you're happy with your grapes. Darken this one a little bit more because it's way too white. You can always use um, the little sponge things too. You know, we can always dabble, dab some of these. Okay, work that really in good, and then use these as your grapes. You know, you just spin them around, maybe a bigger one. They come in a lot of different sizes, right? So it just depends on how big you want your circles. Uh, these are pretty popular too. But, you know, just get used to spinning your brush around is really good practice because you know, there's so many other different designs and things that we can do with this trick. So, you know, the more you feel comfortable spinning your brush around, the better, right? Okay. Go over these again to give them a little more coverage so we don't see any of that green. And definitely a little bit more. Big shape. Keep playing until you get it. Try to tuck behind that one, just fix that one, just do like a little bit of half circle. And then when you go over it again, give it a little cleaner look. Let's do the ones in the back first. Okay. Just start to dry now, so we can definitely go over them again. And make sure we do the back one first. And then when you do the front one, you know, even that out a little bit. And again, I'm going to layer, push them a little bit more. So they're starting to look a little bit more layered now, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to 
And this one, I don't want it too dark because it's on the black. So I'm going to add a little bit more of the perfect purple. So then that way it stands out a little bit more from the black. And this is starting to look a little bit closer to you. So we can always add some reds into that. And give your grapes a little bit more of a, a red look to them. Okay. Add a couple of those. Put a bit of one red on top of. It's more like a. You can always use um, berry wine. I just want to make them a little bit more different. You guys are getting the idea here. This is a big grape. <laughs> and maybe I'll put slide one in there on top of here. So we can look at a bunch of grapes and see how they usually come down in a triangular shape. And so you can always put a couple more here. With the layering. Get a little bit different looks to them. Here, all there. Okay, so now that we've got our base coat of all our fruit basically done, this is where I want to come back to the brush I was using before with the uh, lighter colors on it. Just a tiny little bit of yellow ochre and burnt umber again. We're going to fix that pair. Which I kind of went over it a little bit too much. Sometimes we can sneak in little fixes in there, right? So we just want to work our way around a little bit. Just sneak that in there. And then we're going to do the bottom. It depends if you want your apple on top or your pear on top. And you're gonna fix that pear really nice. The nice thing about the multi surface is that if you did decide to uh, want to just kind of not wreck your grapes, you know, you could erase with the brush with some water. Okay. So again, we can always go in with a, a burnt armor and highlight or shadow just a little bit more. You want to give yourself a little bit more coverage and just where it peeks out. This as long as you got the middle looking good and the coverage you're looking for you can always pop in more shadowing. Okay. So we're gonna go back to our apple again. So I want to fill that in a little bit more so we get good coverage. We're not seeing the green color of our leaves through it. Okay. And you can see it's a nice brighter red. Now, 
we have a little bit of white under it. Sometimes uh, you'll see little bits of yellow throughout your apple too. So now you can just pick up a, a little bit of yellow and add a tiny bit of and just streaks with it. You know, just have fun with it. Don't get too don't have to get too crazy with it. Because you don't want you still want it to be reddish. Okay, just with some highlights. So if it's too so I want to leave enough room at the top here because we're going to put our uh, little dent in where our stem comes out. Okay, so this is where I like using a little bit of berry wine. Okay, so what you're going to do with that is you're just going to give it a little smile line. Okay, and then when after you do that, your if your paint is so wet, you can just kind of flick down from that spot. See that? I just flicked a little bit down. Right, and then it gives it that little spot there where your stem's going to come out. So you want to flick down after you make that. Right, not too much because then, and then you want your, your some, maybe some shadows on this side. You can use a little bit what's left of your darker color and then just kind of shade around a little bit of that berry wine just to kind of give it some darker darkness. Okay. I'm still seeing a little bit of my leaf in there. Definitely I want to maybe go over this again with some more white. Okay. So this is just to deepen my uh, base okay so I am going to go over that again with a little bit of red but you can take a blow dryer to it if you're still seeing some of your leaf under there that you don't like okay. wipe some of that goopiness out much white it's gonna definitely go pink on you right so there's enough to because I'm really fussy about my coverage so, brighter red up at the top and starting to dry enough but it's still pink so I don't want it to be too thick so it doesn't take too long to dry Fan it a little bit. Blow. <laughs> I don't want to turn the blow dryer on right now. Uh, I make lots of noise on in here, but a little bit of that burnt over. We can put our. It's not standing out enough for you. You can always touch in a little bit of the burnt umber with the ver um, berry wine. So you basically want everything to come from that center, right? You want to have a strong line there and then. If you can see that I'm flipping my brush around so that I can get those that shape of the roundness. Okay. A little bit. There's 
little bit more red. Right, and get me nice and covered. Okay. So now I'm going to pick up that tiny bit of yellow in there just to add those few highlights again because I lost them. Okay. Just a few. Well, it's still wet. It's too strong, too yellow. Just kind of go over it again, soften it a bit. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. So at this point, if you feel like you want to go over any of your uh, perfect any of your fruits, you know you can definitely go over them. And uh, I'm going to pick up my tin again to fix a couple of my grapes. This one on the pair here needs a little bit of adjustment. So we don't want this white. Okay. If you feel like you got too much paint in there, just grab your finger and just dab it a couple times, and that'll pull off some of that thickness. And we can get more of a creamy consistency coverage. Coverage here. Take your time, Amanda. So I'm Mandy when I have fun, and then I'm Amanda when things are serious. Yeah. I lost my gradient in my brush. So I can either wipe it out on your towel and then pick up just a little bit more of the darker color. Okay. I think I'm happy with my plums. Okay, so now we're going to go back into our greens. And I do like to play around with different size brushes and have different size leaves. So since we have the ten in our hand, if you want to make it a little bit more brighter, you can make some of them that are smaller a little brighter by adding a little bit of that daffodil yellow into your happy green. Okay. So we're going to add some a few stems and uh, in the brown for the apple, but right now we can definitely add some smaller leaves into our pear, okay, and they can go right over our grapes. Mm -hmm. Look nice, just flicking it down. Mm -hmm. Lift one of those up. And if it's too uh, low the water, you can always just add a little bit of white into your blend. Okay. And I'm not happy with that. And then plus your brushes are in water and they're really waterlogged, then definitely you want to really dry that brush out a little bit more if you're still getting too translucent of a look. And then just go back into your pile and when you go over it again, you'll get a little bit better coverage. And then of course letting it dry. Okay. 
can always put a few coming out of our stems in the background. So you're going to lay some other leaves on top of this. So you're not going to really see where this starts from. So this could be back here somewhere. So this could be in a little bit of a stem. And then I'm going to put a couple leaves on your plums. Okay, so a little bit of a stem. And right over. Okay. And then we can always just do one more. And we can always put a smaller one too, you know, coming through. And yeah, let's put it on top here more. So that you have some bigger leaves and some smaller leaves. Some are a little brighter. Okay. Back over any ones you don't like. A bit of coverage. Do a bunch, and then that way, by the time you come back to them, they're starting to set a little bit more, right? If you feel like you need a little bit more coverage. So we want to put a couple leaves down into our grapes. I'm kind of upside down there. Usually your highlights are on the top. Okay, so you mess up a little bit, just go over it again. Okay, a little bit more brighter colors on top. A little bit more white to it. And then that starts to change the shape and color a little more too. Okay. So now for the um, bigger leaves, I'd like to pull my 12 back out. And if you have a little bit of sap green or a thicket, something dark, or you can even put a little bit of ink spot with your thicket and that'll make a uh, darker green. So the way I did these other leaves on top of the stem was the wiggle is just on the white one side. Okay, so we don't have to put four. We can just actually put one up here. So this is going to come off the stem. And then we're going to put another one and it's going to layer over your other stems. Okay, so just keep in mind what you want to hide. Okay. And we go to a point. And then you can always make another one. A little bit different angle. So you're doing both sides of that kind of top of the leaf. And make sure you're happy with your background leaves before you do that. Now I'm adding a little bit more white into it so that it pops out a little bit stronger. Second coat. One can be small and one can be big. I'm trying to make them a little bit different. Okay, so I'm happy with that. So now I want to, I don't want to hide, I don't want to cover this. I want to keep that open. So 
you know, try to really start your stroke on an angle. Don't come out because you've got to cover all that. So I want to make this really skinny at the base. And then you can kind of come out, bump out, and then slide your stroke in. So then that way you're still seeing your apple. Okay. So the same thing. I'm going to start here on an angle, bump it out. I'm going to cover the base of these leaves so then that way you don't look, it doesn't look like you're seeing just them floating all over the place. Okay, bump it out and then slide up to the chisel. So some people like to add a little bit more of a flip. If you do want to add a flip, then you're going to have to start at the top and then flatten out the bump and then you're going to flip your brush over to get that flip. Okay. You can always add them in you know, later if you want to. Just with a little bit of a, I always call it a dolphin nose. Okay. So you're going to drag a little bit and then just give yourself a little bit of a flip that way. So there's you know, more advanced ways of doing things, of course. There's also little tricks. You definitely don't want a, a fat glob at the top, so sometimes I'll even start at the bottom and work my way up and then just gently kind of flip out that way. So again, I have some red wood wet red underneath there it looks like so it kind of bled through all right so just flip that through okay it's not a bad thing to have a little tiny bit of red through it maybe it's like shine off of it okay so now if you want to use a uh, number one or number two whatever you have handy a uh, strip liner or a uh, smaller number one liner brush you can pick up just a little bit of burnt umber and then what I do is I flip right through my camel so now I have a double loaded liner brush and so all this really needs is just you know the stem through it okay. and then you're going to slide that down until it basically disappears into it. So you just a small little point that's in the hole, but you're going to see the bigger stem. So if you're not seeing enough white to give it a little highlight, then you can always just kind of try to go in and pick up a little bit more of the camel. So are we happy with our hair? I'm not sure. So let's just go over that just a little bit. So I'm going to double load my brush again. Okay. And then I'm just going to come around and give this a little bit more coverage. Okay. You can sneak it right behind there. Tilt your brush around so that you're just using one point or the other, so that you're just getting in there very lightly, lifting up your chisel, the corner of your chisel, and then and flatten it out, and then use all of it in certain areas. But when you're just trying to sneak in a little area, sometimes we're just using the ever so softly that corner of the brush. And yeah, I love using my fingers too. That so gives me a little bit more coverage. Yellow is probably one of the worst ones for coverage. That's why I like putting a little tiny bit of the camel in there too. The camel acts like a white almost. Gives you a little bit more coverage. Alright. So now we want to add a tiny bit of the bottom of it and it's just like a star shape kind of wiggle all the way around don't make it too neat you know you're just playing with it and wiggling it 
you know, I only used the corner of my brush here and I just kind of made it like a random little, you don't want them to look like spiders, but a little bit of a, an edge to them. As you can see the bottom of it. And again, if your apple is dry and you want to just define this area a little bit more, then you can always add a little bit more shading in there. Just make sure that a little bit of floating medium and um, that'll define that a little bit more for you. Okay, so you can always go in with a 10. And where's my 10? Floating medium. Okay, it's my favorite little trick when I just want to float in a little bit more shading somewhere. So I'm going to wet my brush with my floating medium and then I'm going to go pick up that dark color that I want to use and I'm just going to go over my areas that I just want to deepen a little bit. Okay. It'll get darker under that leaf because there's going to be some natural shadows there. Okay, so you can always go and add some shadows underneath. I'm adding that darker purple all the way under around that leaf. So that it looks like that grape is tucking right underneath there. Okay, and then you can use your clean. So I just kind of rinse that out. I always find that if you add that just a little bit more shading on the back sides of them, that it makes them look like they're actually behind. Okay. Again, you can just add a little bit of shading just underneath that leaf. If you really want to perfect things and make them Look like they're standing out a little bit more. Okay. Same with down here. You can always pick up a little bit of your green and just kind of shade a little tiny bit more under the apple. Okay. Underneath pear. Just enough to say that you're shading it and you're not wrecking your gradient that you made with your leaves. Okay. A little bit of a shading trick. And again, I'm just going to use a little bit more of this dirty brush. Kind of go under your grapes and add that little bit of the shade underneath. Oops! I like making mistakes here, so now we just want to rinse that off. So got all that yucky green off. And going back in my burnt umber. And then just add a little bit of shade on the underside of that pair. Just, you know, little things that you can do to make it stand out a little bit more. So yes, one stroke is supposed to be blending and highlighting and shadowing all a stroke, but definitely you can go back in and perfect things. Okay. You can go in and add just a tiny little bit of white on your brush and add, you know, a few more highlights to your leaves or, you know, this one here I'm not happy with. So I'm just going to go over the edge again to highlight that leaf a little bit more. You know, without having to go in and redo the whole stroke. Right? Okay. Because then you'll end up getting it on your apple. And I'm just going to quickly just rinse off uh, some of this chalk here for you. Okay. So again, going around your edges to perfect your edges a little bit more. Where's my camel? Okay, so if you guys want to uh, see how I perfect this a little bit more, I'll just go in and clean up my edges. Okay. And just on the lower half. Okay. And then when I go in to uh, go over and deepen my
lines again, it'll all blend in. Okay, so all I'm doing is just perfecting my shape. Okay, from a little bit here, a little bit here. Okay, again, you get a lot more dark on this side, so you can always pick up your burnt ombre. And just kind of making things look a little bit more neater around your edge. Okay. So you can go all the way around it. And just with floating medium and burnt armor. Okay. You can see how that picks those things there. And you just keep going all the way across until you're happy with your. Because you can drive yourself crazy trying to make everything really perfect the first time you go and make those strokes. But just know that there's always a way. And best to start at the top and then work your way down. Okay? And then we're going to fix all those little side pieces that you didn't like the way they were looking. And another great trick, too, by the way, before I let you go, is black. Okay, so if you're working on a black canvas that you've painted black, and then you're putting, uh, even the bags that work, too. I put a tiniest bit, I'm not even going to put it on my, uh, I'm just going to use the lid. And I'm just going to pick up a little bit of that black. And then I can go around the black. And just neaten it up a little bit more with black. We have some draggy spots. Okay. And that's another way to clean up anything that you don't like. Okay. Just a little bit of floating medium again. You're just putting a tiniest bit of black on one corner of your brush, and then you're just going to make a, you don't want to change the shape of this, so you want to kind of give it still that humpy kind of look, but you just want to kind of neaten things up, okay, and then blend it out. I hope you learned lots here. You've got lots of tips and tricks here to uh, perfect your, give you a different lighting here. And that'll help a little bit more. Okay, and oh yeah, we didn't put any leaves over here. Definitely gonna fill up more leaves. Um, to put a few more into our grapes on the side. One up here. And then that'll definitely hide more of those areas that you don't like. So you can see that I tried to make all my leaves a little bit different colors. And then also some curlicues. Now you have your palette already. What I'd like to do is I just go through an old blend. And try, ooh, picking up red. <laughs> Getting excited, guys. Okay, so normally that would work. Uh, if I didn't touch the red, get too excited. Okay, so I'm picking up a little bit of both colors and I'm just kind of going through it. And I want it to be a little bit watery, so then that way when I do my little curly cues, they're going to really slide and slip. Okay, so hopefully I'll just play on another paper until you get it. Just add more water a little at a time until you get the right consistency. Okay, so usually they're going to start you know attached to something so you can you know add one of these to the little lines take your time and add some one way and then the 
another way. Feather that out. You know, put your little uh, stems in there that way too if you want. You know, with your liner brush, whatever you feel more comfortable with. Oops. And if it's dry, you can erase that thick um, little one. Okay. That's the nice thing about letting things dry before you do it because it's very easy for you to just kind of wipe out that thick stem that you didn't like. Okay, with a clean wet brush. Okay. Make sure it's dry. And then try to go a little bit thinner. Okay. So nothing's ever permanent. So a few more here. Some crazy ones. Because grapes have sometimes that. Look to them. Right. And then also practicing you know, putting your name on there. It helps when all your letters are straight up and down, but when you have a D <laughs> or you know a C, you know, and little ones. So you can, you know, you practice. Right. And then if you want to add uh, more bump to things. Just putting little shine lines into your grapes. Again, make sure it's really nice and thin. Okay, just a little pop like that here and there. And then again, my lines are going in different directions. So just little little highlight spots. And you can always add one into your pear if you feel like you need a little bit more in your apples. Okay, and then of course, you know, just here and there randomly, always adds a little bit more of a pop to things as well. Okay, I think I'm finished. What do you guys think? Please, post your practice on my group. I have two groups now, by the way. One I made private, okay, so you guys can feel comfortable to put your work on there and only other students like yourself that have paid for my program are going to be there. I have the community group that I've made public now because some people like to share things that I've posted on there and they can't do that on a private group. So I have made one public and one private so then that, that way the whole world can join us and uh, see what we're doing and then like I said we do have the private one that's just just for you guys that are, are taking the program and want some critiques and you're you know kind of shy about putting your work out there so believe me all you ladies are wonderful that have been taking the program very supportive loving ladies they're only going to encourage you more so please do not be afraid to post your work and we can help you how to make things better if you're having problems if you want to meet meet with me uh, privately we can always meet on zoom the nice thing about meeting on zoom it's free for you to use so you can get a recording of our session after so that's what i'm trying to encourage you guys to to come and, and get some more help with me critiques get you know half an hour of time on zoom and we'll get the paint brushes out together and we'll practice whatever you're having a hard time with together and then that way hopefully you'll be able to show me your work and and then i can say oh you know too much highlighting too much shading you know your gradient is a little bit too much on the light side or too much on the dark side you know so i can really help you so if you've taken the whole program one to five um, definitely a lot of those, I'm finding a lot of people that have taken my first five courses don't even ask me for help now because I've been so thorough in explaining myself over and over again with so many different ways of doing things that uh, you're still, you know, feeling confident to, to, to keep moving on with making more designs. So again, I hope you like this little variation. I'm going to just quickly share the uh, original with you again just to show you the end. Okay, this is a little crooked. There we go. So it's a little bit different than, you know, some little variations, a little bit more orangey or red, you know, so just, you know, apples are always different colors. So I just wanted to show you the bag again. And um, there's going to be a complete uh, list of colors that I used in the PDF with the brushes I used 
as well. And uh, love to see your versions. And hope to see you again in the next course. Bye-bye. Happy painting. <laughs>